Distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We are delighted to welcome you to the Therma Hotel Yahorina for the opening ceremony of the 8th International Congress, Engineering, Environment and Materials in Process Industry, EEM 2023. Welcome. On behalf of the Faculty of Technology Zvodnik, University of East Sarajevo and EEM 2023, allow me to extend a warm welcome to the representatives of the Academy of Sciences and Arts of the Republic of Srpska, academic professor Dragoljub Mirjanic, vice president of the Academy, under whose auspices the scientific conference is taking place, representatives of the Ministry of Spatial Planning, Construction and Ecology of the Republic of Srpska, Ms. Svetlana Radusin, the assistant for the, uh, of the Minister for the Ecology, distinguished rector of the uh, University of East Sarajevo, Professor Milan Kulic and his associates, vice rectors, representatives of the co-organizing institutions and representatives of the academic commun community, deans, professors, researchers, and students attend attending this event, representatives of the sponsors, the industrial and business sector entities, and representatives of, lo of local communities, all the participants of EEM 2023 representatives of Happy Travel Tourist Agency from Jelina, the staff of the Thermoc Hotel Jahorina, and representatives of the media. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished members of the scientific committee, dear guests, we are proud to say that the Faculty of Technology Zvornik University of East Sarajevo has had the honor of organizing this event, categorized as the first category International Scientific Congress for 14 years now. For the past 14 years, the Congress has gathered over 1,500 researchers and professionals from over 60 countries who have taken part with more than 1,700 submissions. We are also proud to say that this is the second time the Congress is organized as a hybrid event, uh, bringing together particip participants both in person and through an online platform. Continuing the tradition of the past seven events, EM 2023 offers a platform for bringing together academia, researchers, business entrepreneurs, practitioners, and policymakers, allowing them to share their recent theoretical knowledge, research findings, and experiences in dealing with sustainable solutions and innovative ideas in the area of chemical engineering and technology and process industry. By participating in this exchange of solutions and innovations, all those attending this year's Congress will hopefully not only benefit from them by implying them in their specific areas, but they will also have the opportunity to contribute to the passing of the enthusiasm on to the new genera generations and to the betterment of society as a whole. We therefore wish to thank all those who have participated in the event, in the events or organized for these past 14 years. We owe our gratitude to all the authors for their submissions, researchers, academics, and associates for all the results we have achieved through this important event. Our special thanks go to the members of the administrative and technical personnel for their, their help so far. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to extend our warm welcome to everyone of you sitting in this room and welcome you all to the 8th International Congress, Engineering, Environment and Materials in Process Industry, EEM 2023. We thank you all for taking time out of your schedule and joining us for this event. We would also like to, to extend our very warm, warm welcome to all the people who are not in this room, but who are accessing the event via video platform. Ladies and gentlemen, I now invite the working presidency to take their seats. Professor Dragan Vujadinovic, Dean of the Faculty of Technology and the Chairman of the Organizing Committee. Professor Biljana Pajin, Dean of the Faculty of Technology in Novi Sad. But... Professor Jurislav Babic, Dean of the Faculty of Food Technology, Osijek. Okay. Borislav Malinovic, Dean of the Faculty of Technology, Banja Luka. Okay. 
Professor uh, Miladin Gligoric, the Faculty of Technology Zvornik. And last but not least, Professor uh, Miomir Pavlovic, the Faculty of Technology Zvornik. Thank you. You may take the seat. Please take the seat. I now invite the chairman of the organizing committee and dean of the Faculty of Technology, Zvornik, University of East Sarajevo, Professor Dragan Vojadinović, to address the conference. Dean Vojadinović. Thank you, Vesna. Good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, uh, representative of the ministry and the spatial planning, uh, const uh, construction and ecology of the Republic of Srpska, Mrs. Uh, Svetlana Radusin, Vice President of the Academy of Science and Arts of the Republic of Srpska, Drag uh, Dragoljub Mirjanić, distinguished guest, distinguished uh, rector of the University of East Sarajevo, Milan Kulic, Vice Rector, uh, Honorable uh, Deans Biljana Pajin, the Faculty of Technology Novi Sad, uh, Juroslav Babić, the Faculty of Technology, Food Technology Osijek, and Borislav Malinović, the Faculty of Technology Banja Luka. Representative of the local communities and the businesses and the industrial sector, our sponsor, participant at the EM 2023, uh, fellow teachers, uh, researchers, distinguished guests, ladies, and the gentlemen, welcome to the 8th International Cong Congress Engineering, Environment and Materials in Process Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, the International Scientific Congress EM 2023 is a bi biennial event held on the beautiful mountain of Yahorina. Two years ago, we were faced with the unprecedented uh, challenge, challenges, the COVID-19 pandemic. We were forced uh, to adapt uh, the, ch uh, the change in our societies, living many with a sense of physical, social, and economic uncertainty. This year, however, the world is, the, is yet again facing challenge, challenges uh, of different nature. The threat of global, wo global war and the, the economic crisis that has spread in most parts of the world. Again, as a scientist, we must look at uh, these challenges time as an opportunity to reinvent the importance of the work we do, to open ourselves up to new ideas and build up a new concept uh, and connections. The International Congress, EM, is organized as a hybrid event uh, for second time, both in person and digital platform. This year, the event has gathering eminent researchers of the uh, researchers and professionals from the 27 countries, a total 190 papers, papers have been uh, submitted to on and on topics we covering. Uh, just small reminder: the topics what we covering is chemical engineering, uh, elect, uh, chemical and electrochemical engineering, food and engineering and biotechnology, environmental engineering. Material, ma materials and material characterization, nanotechnology, inorganic chemistry and technology, organic chemistry and technology, plasma technology, energy efficiency and renewable uh, energy sources, textile engineering, corrosion and material protection, metallurgy, management in the process industry and almosilicate materials and technology. We are proud uh, to see such uh, enthusiasm in, in, in the academic community, and we feel inspired by the willingness uh, to come together and bring about the solution for many problems that the world facing today. In the age of globalization, a more rapid development of science and so society depends on the innovation in the field of materials and technology, taking into account both current needs and economy and industry and the efforts to preserve environment as a prerequisite for survival, which makes which make the topics defined at the EM 2023 more urgent. The EM 
uh, is uh, an opportunity for members of uh, academic community to exchange the results of their work uh, internationally and uh, gain insight into the possibility of applying their research results in practice. This year, we organize uh, also B2B meeting, which will al allow, allow uh, representatives of the industry to exchange their ideas with the participants of the Congress. Uh, this event will certainly encourage both participants to extend their uh, cooperation even further and uh, bring about new projects and publication and promote the development of industry in the region abroad. Another novelty is, uh, is that uh, AM 2023 is dedicated all uh, work at, uh, on uh, Tuesday to, to the topic named Almosilicates Materials Technology and uh, Plasma Technology as one of the most rapidly developed branches in the process industry and, particip and the participants will have the opportunity to publish their manuscripts in the field, have discussed with the relevant representative of the industrial sector and leaders in the field of industry and region. Distinguished guests, the EM 2023 is a eighth scientific conference organized by the Faculty of Technologies Vornik the conference was established 14 years ago, and we, we are proud to say that uh, so far, uh, over 1,500 researchers and the professionals from the over 60 countries uh, have taken part in the Congress with over 1,700 submissions. However, we will not have managed to meet uh, such a high standards without the help of the friends of the Faculty of Technology Zvornik and the EM, of course, uh, such as institutions, companies, and individuals who have afforded, who have offered uh, their kind of support for the for this event. Therefore, we take uh, this opportunity to extend our uh, sincere uh, gratitude to all of them. We are especially grateful to the Ministry of Economy and Entrepreneurship uh, of the Republic of Srpska and Academia Science and Arts of the Republic of Srpska under under whose auspices this event has been organized for 14 years. We are especially pleased that we have this opportunity to express our gratitude to the Ministry of Special, Special Planning and the Construction and the Ecology of the Republic of Srpska, who, who have played an, an enormous part in the reconstruction of the building of the Faculty of Technology Zvornik as the first phase of the project of the energy, energy efficiency in the Republic of Srpska, who have also given their enormous support to, to other facilities of the University of East Sarajevo. We would like also to, to thank our general sponsors, to, thank, to say thanks to our general sponsors, such as Alumina Zvornik, the city of Zvornik, and Ziochem Zvornik. We owe our, our gratitude also and to Elixir uh, Zorka Shabbat. Inving Invest Engineering, Elker Lubia, and municipalities uh, of Lopare and Srebr Srebrenica, and numerous, uh, numerous other companies for their sponsorship and their general support for this event. We owe our gratitude to the uh, Union of, of Engineers and Tec uh, Technicians of the Republic of Serbia for their general technical and organizational, organizational support. We wish to thank uh, to the Faculty of Technology and Metallurgy of Belgrade, uh, the Institute of Physics of Belgrade and Faculty of Food Technology, OSIEC and Faculty of Food Technology Banja Luka for their help and organization support over the many years. We are delighted to say that uh, this year's event is supported by internationally renewed uh, scientific publisher such as MDPI, uh, the Association of Chemical Engineers of Serbia, uh, Engineering Society for Corrosion Serbia and Faculty of Technology of Banja Luka. Oh, sorry. We would like to thank the organization endorsing the EM 2023, the European uh, Food Association, ISECI. Also, I would wish to express our sincere gratitude to, the, to all of them and to the scientific committee and uh, the many uh, reviewers who, who have put the great effort to uh, in order to the sorry i have to take the water 
it will be longer my speech in the opening ceremony. But simply, I, I have to mention all people who help this uh, conference. Otherwise, we couldn't manage to, man manage to organize in such a standard and such a quality this conference. Sorry. We also wish to thank our host, the management of the, of the staff uh, of the Thermark Hotel, who will make sure that our stay here uh, for three days be the be the pleasant as, as possible, as well as to happy travel Bielina for their, their technical support. We are especially grateful for our plenary lecturers and speaker uh, to those of uh, you who decided to participate in these activities at, at the Congress aware of the fact that uh, presentation and exchange of scientific achievements is uh, of key importance. We also owe our gratitude to all uh, the associ associates and staff members of the Faculty of Technology Zvornik for offering their knowledge and experience in order to make this event possible as well as, as media covering the activities of this gathering. Distinguished uh, guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we hope that uh, with your help, this Congress will, uh, will be successful and achieve its goals. We wish you a pleasant stay in this beautiful Olympic mountain, Yahudina. Thank you all for your coming here and welcome again. Thank you, Dean Redinovich. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Academy of Sciences and Arts of the Republic of Srpska, Professor uh, Dragoljub Mirjanic, the Vice President, will now address the conference. Let us give a warm welcome to academic uh, Dragoljub Mirjanic. Distinguished guests, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It is great the pleasure to greet you on behalf of Academy of Science and Arts Republic of Srpska and to be among you today. Organization Traditional Scientific Conference as the eighth International Congress of Engineering, Environment and Materials in Process Industry under the roof of the Faculty of Technology Zvornik University in Sarajevo, is for certain one of the pathways in which scientists from the Republic of Srpska, together with their, their respected colleagues, contribute to the affirmation and development of engineering environment and materials in process industry. I consider that the work and results of this Congress will be of valuable help not only to the participants of this Congress and the scientific and academic societies in this field, but also to our ministries in the government of Republic of Srpska, both in solving current problems and creating long-term policy in that field. With these wishes and expectation, I greet you once again and wish to participants of the 8th International Congress Engineering, Environment and Materials in Process Industry a successful work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Mirjanic. And now on behalf of the Ministry of Spatial Planning, Construction and Ecology of the Republic of Srpska, Ms. Svetlana Radusin, the Assistant Minister for Ecology, would like to address the conference. Let us give a warm welcome to Ms. Radusin. Thank you very much. Poštovane dame i gospodo, Čast mi je i zadovoljstvo da vas pozdravim u ime Ministarstva za prostorno uređenje, građevinarstvo i ekologiju Republike Srpske i u svoje ime i da se zahvalim na prilici da prije svega kao diplomirani inženjer tehnologije prisustujem jednom ovakvom događaju. 
Posebnu zahvalnost dugujemo Tehnološkom fakultetu Zvornik Univerziteta u Istočnom Sarajevu na istrajnosti i organizaciji ovog kongresa i činjenici da kvalitet organizacije i prezentovanih radova iz godine u godinu raste. Pitanje savremenih tehnologija i materijala u procesnoj industriji, njihova proizvodnja i način korišćenja uz minimalno opterećenje životne sredine postali su pitanje opstanka planete. Često citiram drevnu mudrost da planetu nismo naslijedili od predaka, nego da smo je pozajmili od potomaka i zato je naša odgovornost u ovom trenutku nemjeljiva. Za Ministarstvo za prostorno uređenje, građevinarstvo i ekologiju, zaštita životne sredine nije samo jedna u nizu nadležnosti i skup pravila koje bi trebalo poštovati. Za sve nas... Briga o životnoj sredini je pitanje savjesti, način života i obaveza koju svakodnevno, krajnje predano i angažovano izvršavamo. Za nas u Republici Srpskoj i u Bosni i Hercegovini je posebno važno da radimo na jačanju kapaciteta, na ubrzanju procesa koji podrazumijevaju regionalnu i sve druge oblike saradnje i identifikaciju najboljih praksi i zato smatram da ovaj kongres generalno doprinosi saradnji akademske zajednice, uprave i privrede i da daje neophodan odgovor na sve izazove koji nas očekuju. Energetska kriza, ogromne posljedice klimatskih promjena, bezbjednost proizvodnje hrane, najveći su izazovi na koje naša zajednica mora reagovati, povećanjem energetske efikasnosti, većom upotrebom obnovljivih izvora energije, i stalnim razvojem i ulaganjem u poboljšanje energetske i transportne infrastrukture i usluga, a koji bi trebalo da nas dovedu do cilja održive i napredne zelene ekonomije zasnovane na efikasnoj upotrebi resursa. Mi, tehnolozi, sa svojim znanjem smo tu nezamijenili. Hvala na pašnje. Thank you, Ms. Radusin. And now, just for the for our for our from for our guests from abroad, I will give you a translation of the kind and wise words of our uh, representative of the uh, ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure and honor to uh, greet you on behalf of the Ministry of Spatial Planning, Construction and Ecology of Republic of Srpska and on my own behalf, and to thank you for the opportunity, above all, as a Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering and, and Technology to attend such an important event. I owe special gratitude to the Faculty of Technology Zvornik, University of East Sarajevo, for the continuous efforts in the organization of this Congress and the fact that the quality of the organization and the submission presented has been on the continuous rise for the past uh, uh, years. The issue of modern technologies and materials in process industry, their production and application with minimum impact on the environment have become a matter of survival of our planet. I often quote the ancient wise words that, uh, that we do not inherit the planet from our ancestors from our ancestors, but we all, only borrow it from our children. And that is uh, why our responsibility at this moment is immeasurable. For the Ministry of Spatial uh, Planning, Construction and Ecology, the environment protection is not only one of many jurisdictions and a set of rules that should be obeyed for us all. The environment protection is a matter of conscience. It is a way of life and a duty we all have to fulfill with utmost dedication and engagement. For us in the Republic of Srpska and Bosnia and Herzegovina, it is particularly important to work on strengthening the capacities to stimulate the processes of regional and other forms of cooperation to identify the best practices. Therefore, I find that this Congress in general contributes to the cooperation between the academic community and the government and the industrial sector, and that it gives necessary solutions for the challenge, challenges ahead of us. The energy crisis, enormous consequences of the climate change, safety in food production are the greatest challenges that our community must respond to. By increasing energy efficiency, larger use of renewable sources of energy, and the continuous development and investments in the improvement of energy and transportation infrastructure and services that should bring us to our goal 
which is sustainable and advanced green econo economy based on efficient use of resources. And we, are, and we as chemical engineers and technologists are in this in irreplaceable. So thank you once again. And now I invite Mr. Zoran Petković, uh, the general manager of ZeoChem, uh, LTD Zvornik to address the conference. Please welcome our distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, welcome to Mountain of Yahorina to this Congress. Unfortunately, I lost my speech on the way to Yahorina because of lots of small, uh, snow, so I will just start to speak from my mind shortly. Uh, the company Zeochem, as some of you may know, exists for more than 200 years and as such constantly grows and develops in a various section of chemical industry. Uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we are present for more than six years, and this is the first time that we are officially, let's say, participating in such event, because we are really uh, supporting such events, because uh, the Zeochem as a company which is working uh, in, in, in high chemical, let's say, technologies, cannot grow and cannot develop without good cooperation between uh, are and as an industry and, and <clears throat> on the other side, academic and scientific, um, let's say, how to say, group of, of, of institutions. Uh, I would like to, to thank to the faculty of, of Zvornik for the good support in our existence in uh, Zvornik, because we are already working on some uh, good high quality projects, which will for sure contribute to the development of the company itself. This year, tomorrow, it's a day for alumina silicates, specially dedicated, and we will also participate as a, uh, in, in a way with, the, with some lectures from, uh, with the guests which have came from the Switzerland, which are from our R&D department. Once again, I will, not, I will just try to be as short as possible. I'm welcoming you to, the, to this beautiful event, and I hope that we will be satisfied after this Congress uh, I hope that you will all be satisfied uh, as we are and as we did so far. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Petkovic. And now I invite uh, Mr. Sasha Boschkovic, uh, uh, the director of the Veterinary Office of Bosnia and Herzegovina, to address the conference. Let's welcome Mr. Boschkovic. Uvaženi rektori, prorektore Univerziteta u Istočnom Sarajevu. Distinguished, distinguished rector and vice rectors of the University of East Sarajevo. Vlade Republike Srpske. Representatives of the government of the Republic of Srpska. Uvaženi dekani, radno predsjedništvo. Honorable deans and the working presidency. Predstavnici akademske zajednice, dragi gosti. Representatives of the academic community and dear guests. Zadovoljstvo mi je da... Mogu u svoje lično ime i u ime Kancelarije za veterinarstvo pozdravim jedan ovakav skup, a to je kongres, osmi kongres EM 2023. godine Jakore. It is my great pleasure and honor to uh, uh, greet this such an important event, the, the EEM 2023, on behalf of my organization, of, my, of the veterinary office of the Bosnia and Herzegovina and my own Možda ćete sebi postaviti pitanje šta je jedan doktor veterinarske medicine danas radi ovdje. Maybe you will ask yourself what a doktor of veterinary medicine is working here at the moment. Međutim, u drugoj riječi ovog današnjeg skupa je naša zajednička povezna tačka između veterine, odnosno i ekologije. Uh, however, the second word, uh, word in the title of our uh, gathering here uh, it lies the connection between uh, veterinary medicine and um, uh, the, the, the and in, in ecology, environment protection. Vjerujem da znate koliki problem predstavlja uklenjanje animalnog otpada i vjerujem da vam je poznato da je Bosna i Hercegovina jedna od rijetkih zemalja u Evropi, a i u okruženju koja nema izgrađen sistem skupljanja animalnog otpada i njegove prijade. I believe that you are aware of the 
uh, uh, the greatness of the problem of uh, animal waste in, in the world today. And I believe that you know that Bosnia and Herzegovina does not have a system for removing animal waste. Uh, Kolika je opasnost animalna otpad, animalni otpad, vjerujem da svi znate. I believe that you all know how dangerous is animal waste. A koliko se i propuštenje šanse u uklanjanju animalnog otpada, kao što je gospođa iz Ministarstva ekologije upravo rekla, vjerujem da i to znate. I also believe that you are aware how important are the chances that we have lost, that we have missed in the past, that we have missed in uh, removing the waste, the animal waste, as the, the Ms. Radusin has already mentioned in the Ministry of Vjerujem da će predavanja u naredna tri dana iznjediti određena kvalitetna rješenja u uklanjanju animalnog odpada njegovog izbrinjavanja i ekonomskog riskoristavanja, što je izuzetno bitno u ovom momentu i nestašice i energije, ali ono što nas kao veterinare mnogo više zanima je bio bezbjednost i kontrola širenja zaraznih bolesti. I believe that in the next three days we will have uh, solutions for uh, removing the animal waste yeah. and the control of the, um, infectious diseases. Neću više da vas zamaram. Svima vama, odnosno nama, želim uspješan rad u naredna tri dana i kako sam i rekao, kvalitetna rješenja u zbinjavanju animalnog odpada. I wish you all a good four days, the next four days, and quality solutions for the problem of animal waste. Hvala lijepo i prijatno. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bošković, and sorry for ruining your speech. Does anyone else wish to address the conference? If not, I now invite Professor Dr. Milan Kulić, Rector of the University of East Sarajevo, to address the audience and open the Congress. Let us give a warm welcome to Rector Kulić. I ja ću govoriti na srpskom jeziku. Dame i gospodo, dragi prijatelji, Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, participants, Osmog kongresa inženjerstvo, tehnologija i materijali u procesnoj industriji. Environment, engineering and materials in process industry. Dozvolite mi da vas pozdravim u ime Univerziteta u Išćom Sarajevo. Allow me to greet you on behalf of the University of East Sarajevo. Svima vama koji ste danas ovdje na Jahorini u hotelu Termag i koji ćete boraviti narednih nekoliko dana, želim da se prijatno osjećate. To all of you who are attending this conference and who are staying here and at this beautiful Thermal Hotel, I wish a pleasant stay. Oni koji nisu danas na Jahorini ili ovih dana na Jahorini, a ovaj kongres će pratiti online, također pozdravljam njih. I also want to greet those who are not today with us on the Jahorina mountain, but are following, are attending, following, listening to the speakers online. Svi vam se zahvaljujem jeste svojim prisustvom, svojim učešćem na ovom kongresu dali doprinos u internacionalizaciji Tehnološkog fakulteta u Zvorniku i Univerziteta u Ištom Sare. I wish to thank you all because by participating here at this event you are giving a great contribution to the internal internationalization of the Faculty of Technology Zvornik and of the University of Sarajevo. Ovaj naučni skup ili kongres se organizuje već 15 godina i to dovoljno govore o njegovom kvalitetu. This scientific gathering has been organized for 15 years so far and this is a proof enough of its quality. Zahvaljujući managementu Tehnološkog fakulteta u Zvorniku i naravno učesnicima ovih prethodnih skupova. Thanks to the management of the Faculty of Technology Zvornik and to the participants of this and former gatherings. Zahvaljujući kvalitetu radova koji se prezentuju na ovom skupu, ovaj naučni skup, odnosno kongres je proglašen kongresom ili naučnim skupom prve kategorije od strane našeg ministarstva i ministarstva Republike Srbije. 
thanks to the quality of the submissions uh, submitted of the papers manuscripts sub submitted so far uh, uh, this Congress has been categorized as the first category international Congress by the our ministry and the min and the Ministry of Sorry, of Serbia. Serbia. Of Serbia Knowledge is the thing that changes most rapidly. Ali but also uh, becomes outdated. Uh, vas, so jeste, we all here have the duty and obligation to da pratimo promjene koje se dešavaju na naučnom nivou to follow the changes that happen on the, the scientific level. In order to be a part, all together be part of. Mogli da pratimo tehnološki razvoj uh, u svijetu. And be uh, uh, aware of the technological development in the world. Siguran sam da će rezultati koje ćete prezentovati ovih dana u svojim radovima tome doprinijeti. I'm sure that the results that you are going to present in your uh, works, in your papers in, in these four days will contribute to this goal. Želim vam da se lijepo družite na Jahorini. I wish you all to have a good time connecting with each other, hanging out with each other. I da se ponovo vidimo za dvije, četiri, šest godina na isto mjesto. And we, hopefully we will see you again in two or four or six years again. To ime... Ovaj naučni skup proglašavam otvorenim i želim vam uspjeh u radu. I now pronounce this congress open and I wish you a success in your work. Hvala vam lijepo. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Ladies and gentlemen, with this we finish the opening ceremony. We now start with the plenary sessions. I invite the moderators for the first lecture to take over the management of the scientific part of the Congress and announce the first plenary lecture. Okay. I will just, while the presidency is preparing for the work, I will read the first, the, the short biography of our guest. Sorry about this <laughs> delay. <laughs> okay, I now move. I would like to welcome our uh, distinguished guest, Maria Loizidou. Uh, Maria Loizidou obtained her PhD in chemical engineering, fo focusing on the field of environmental protection at the University of London. She followed an academic career being professor at the National Technical University of Athens in the School of Chemical Engineering and head of the unit of environmental science and technology. Her efforts are continuous in the field of the environmental protection and human health, enhancing edu education, research technology, and innovation. She has been scientific responsible for more than 175 in environmental projects, supporting competent author authorities, municipalities, and other and others. She has more than 600 publications in international scientific journals and conferences and more than 8,100 citations H index. Professor Loisy Du is the head of the scientific committee of the series of conferences on sustainable waste management, bringing together academics, private and public sector, municipalities and regions, professionals from all continents. Professor Loisidu won the first screen award with the Life Soul Brine project that was voted uh, as the best life environment project for the period of 1992-2017 uh, among more than 4,000 life projects. She's also the head of WTERT Greece. So let's welcome our distinguished guest. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Till we 
start. Just I would like to thank you for this invitation and thanks the Faculty of Technology and the Dean for the invitation and the rectors and the distinguished guests here today for this conference. Let me start. Okay. Um, yes, I come from a Greece. I'm a professor at the National Technical University of Athens. Um, Greece is south, one of the southest parts of Europe. I come from the National Technical University of Athens. It's the eldest te uh, technical university. It was founded in 1836. I will say it's the most prestigious university of Greece. We get the highest marks and because we have entrance examinations in the, in the engineering. It's only engineering school, technology and engineering. We have nine disciplines. And um, I will say that we have um, a, a, good, a good start, a good staff in the, in the departments. Um, coming to the unit of environmental, engineer, environmental Techno science and technology uh, is the unit where I'm chairing. Uh, it was created by me long ago. We have a great interest on waste management, waste water treatment, desalination and brines, industrial uh, brines pollution, now climate change a lot, of course, eco design, and we use a lot of tools that the European Commission has really developed through the years, and we are using them for our processes. Uh, the unit is the lab, and Yelitz is going to give a speech later on. She's in charge of the, of the lab, a certified lab. Uh, we have quite a lot of, of activities in the lab. Uh, I, I have more than 50 people, researchers and PhD students, uh, in the in the lab, uh, doing a lot of work. Why I'm giving this speech today? Why I bring you the experience of Europe. Greece is a member of the European Union, but not only Greece. We are working very closely with Europe. I'm going to talk about the waste and natural resources. I don't know if I can. If it, no. Can you hear me? Each year in the European Union, we are, we consume about seven point three billion of resources. We we, we have we create 2.7 billion of waste. And of course, we are using a small fraction of that and then and the rest ends up in landfill. Of course, this is not a good example. The equivalent of 148 million tons of CO2 emissions could be avoided annually. 5.25 billion euros would be saved from the recovery of recyclables, uh, such as paper, glass, plastics, aluminum, steel per year, of course, from process industries, this is very crucial. Half billion of new jobs can be created, green jobs. This is the balance of Europe, the trade balance of Europe. We need three Europe's to survive. We import 1.5 billion resources in Europe and we export only 0.5 billion. So Europe is not sustainable anymore and we have to do something about this. So Europe is moving now, when very lately, we've lost quite a lot of time from linear economy to circular economy. What is linear economy? We take the natural resources, we take, we make products, we dispose and make waste. And this, of course, is not sustainable anymore. For the biology, we moved now to circular economy. We have the biological materials, which can close the loop very quickly. But on the other hand, when we talk about industrial processes, when you are using minerals and you are taking a lot of virgin materials, we are making use, we make products. We have to return back and use these materials as a primary material. It's a secondary material, but this should be the materials we have to use in the coming years. Uh, the circular economy and resource efficiency. We extract natural resources. We have to go through eco designs of products. And the eco design means that we design the best possible way to be sustainable. We manufacture products, we distribute the, the product use, and then we usually go to landfills. We have to stop this model. We have to reuse, recycle, and recover, and then stop extracting natural materials and use the secondary materials. The European Commission, very lately, 2015, they set up this ambitious package of circular economy. This ambitious um, package of circular economy is creating a lot of pressure on the member states, but also for Europe and the force internationally because you have United Nations putting their goals into as well. So on, the, on December 20, 2015, and now we have more and more, 
the value of products, materials, and resources is maintaining economy as much as possible. Waste generation is minimized. Economy and competitiveness are strengthened, creating new businesses for opportunities and introducing innovative products and services, economic, social, and environmental benefits. So we have to look on these aspects very, very closely and find solutions. And of course, on the other hand, we have to minimize the environmental impacts. I'm not going to stay more on that. So have a look on this um, 2015 United Nations Agenda on 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Circular economies included in most of these sustainable development goals. And on the other hand, we have the Paris Agreement of Climate Change, and we just have to follow the renewable energy sources. We have to promote the development of low carbon technology at wet level activation of processes that speed up public and private investments in innovation, and new business opportunities in all, not only EU, but uh, we're talking about EU. Now, what is this package, the, uh, the EU Action Plan on Circular Economy? We have to see the key action areas and also the five priority sector, sectors that they've been in, really published uh, uh, initially. We have the production as, as a key action area. We have to be very careful on the production, on the consumption, on the waste management, the secondary raw materials, and all these four key actions should be in close collaboration for innovation, investment, and monitoring. So all these things really come in circles and they have to, to work to, very closely to reach the goal. On the other side, we have the five priority sectors, is plastics, food waste, construction and demolition waste, critical raw materials, we don't have raw materials. Europe is running out of raw materials and we are in very critical situation. And also the biomass and bio-based products that I'm going to, to put a lot of emphasis in my speech today. Let's start with the waste management. What, the, what, what is needed for waste management? We have the hierarchy of waste management. First, to avoid creating waste. The second is to reuse materials. As they are, we have to reuse them, not just use them once, reuse. The third step is recycle. We process materials and we make products. This is recycling. Energy is the fourth option that we, are, we have to make, and then disposal of waste. And of course, the European uh, Union have put quite a lot of objectives. I'm not going to start on those to, to save a bit of time. Let's see what is the legislation in European Union. This is what we have in 2014, and this is the target of 50% recycling of municipal solid waste in Europe. 2020 is gone. So we're supposed to have 50% recycle of our waste. It's not there. 2025, 60% and 65%, 2030. These figures are no near that in the whole of Europe. Uh, what do we have to do? We have to do bio waste separate collection. Bio waste is the food mainly we throw away. It is more than 40% of our waste, 40, 45%. One calculation method, because in Europe, we don't even have one way to calculate the waste, how do we create? And of course, they are going to put more and more targets on, on waste management. Uh, you can see the materials that we have to recycle and the targets regarding plastic, wood, ferrous metals, aluminum, glass, paper, carbon. So we have to reach the targets up to 2030, 85%, 75%, 55%. So the figures are very high. We have to see what we are doing in each country. What do you do in your country? And on the other side, we have to avoid landfill. By 2030, we have to landfill only 10% of our waste. And also we have to reduce food waste by 30% by 2025 and 50% by 2030. And you will see the figures. It's frightening how much we are really producing as food waste, which is wasted from our houses. Each one of us is really wasting. This is the picture of Europe. 
and the red lines, it means that we are doing a lot of landfills. South Mediterranean countries, including my country, Greece is here, and my own own country, Cyprus, though they are member states of the, of the European Union, they are performing very badly. And if we see the advanced, the more, can I say, advanced countries, Germany, Sweden, Belgium, Denmark, they don't make any landfill. Why? Why they are not doing it? They incinerate a lot. They recycle a lot, but they incinerate a lot. Still, they are not sustainable. We can only incinerate 30% of our waste. We have to recover 70%. So there are penalties there because they incinerate a lot. There are penalties here because we landfill a lot. I don't know how much we are landfilling in the country. Quite a lot, I will say that. Um, I'm, I'm now concentrated on food waste because this food waste can become a raw material for products. That's why I'm putting a lot of emphasis on food waste and bio waste. And in this country, you have a lot of bio materials and we have to move away from the processes we know up to now. So the objective is to reach uh, the sustainable development goal to have food waste by 2030. Today in Europe, we have 100 million tons of food waste in Europe, 100 million. So we have to make sure that we really change this attitude. Where do we lose this food? In developing countries, 40% of the food value chain is lost in the two stages of production and handling and storage. It, because you have poor harvesting techniques, poor storage facilities, transportation, et cetera. In advanced countries, we are losing on the other side distribution and market consumption. So the most advanced countries are using because they consume too much and they throw away too much. So we have to bring the balance. USA, is, uh, each person is producing over 110 kilos per year, we throw away. Then Europe, followed by China, Japan, and Korea, North Africa, Latin America, and so on, we decrease. So we have to make to change our model, how we really spend um, this this food. Just to remember, the size of food waste problem in the world globally. Every year, one third of the world production of food ends up in the trash. One third of this food, it could really do a lot of things. 1.3 billion tons of food still perfectly edible are lost or wasted enough to three, to feed three billion people. 3.3 gigatons of greenhouse gas emission is the carbon footprint of food waste. 8% of the global greenhouse gas emissions and now trying and forcing industry to bring down the CO2 emissions. Three times the water volume of Lake Geneva is used to produce food that is lost or wasted. 30% of the waste agricultural land is occupied to produce food that is never consumed. So we have to do something about this. And these figures say that China is the first producer, followed by USA. If global food waste was a country, it would have been the third largest greenhouse gas emitter after USA and China. So we have to really look in a different way how to handle our food our, that we waste. Europe, Europe is not doing better. We have about, um, 100 million tons per year, which means that uh, could feed 200 million people. Half of Europe could really be fed with this waste. 20% of EU food production is lost or wasted. 170 million tons of CO2 emissions, 143 billion euros related costs, almost 600 euros for each household is wasted. And of course, you can see that our houses, 53% 53 of, 53 of this food waste comes from our houses. Why did I mention this? The European Commission is changing the model of this circularity, but not only circular economy, but also bioeconomy, which means that we have to look on the resources that they are bio-based to make products. And what are these materials? The biomass sources are agricultural residues. You have a lot in this country, sewage sludge, 
municipal solid waste I just mentioned, animal residues, it was earlier on mentioned, industrial residues and forestry residues. So we have to take all these waste materials and make the new products that we need, we live, that we need to live. So this is the bioeconomy we have to move away. And how do we do it? We have the circular economy on one hand, we have the bioeconomy on the other hand, and then we have to develop the processes, new processes, we call it biorefinery, to produce the, the, the products we need. And probably this picture is, is good to see. These are the products we consume as, a, as societies. All the materials we need, all the products we need, they come mainly from petroleum. And that's why you have all these CO2 emissions. We have to change this model. Let's see what you can substitute here. We can do this. We can take all the biomaterials that we throw away, starch, hemicellulose, cellulose, lignin, all the biomaterials that we have to create the new building blocks, the secondary chemicals, the intermediate material products, and then the products that we need to use. This is the, the, the future uh, picture that we have to have in mind. So all the products that we need are there. What do we do? Can we do it? Can we manage to do it? I think we are not that far. You can see this, that the biomaterials competitive landscape tells you a lot. This is not yet commercial. These products are not yet commercial. But on the other side, you can see that we have commercial stages, which means that the technology has been developed, the processes have been developed, and also industries are there, new industries are there to give us the products. And um, the more we do, the more we save um, the CO2 emissions from petroleum and the petroleum products. Of course, there are barriers, it's not easy. We have challenges for scaling up technologies. The SMEs have problems. We need skilled people, we still don't have a lot. We have to have the social acceptance. If you say to somebody that we get this from where will he buy it? And of course, we need the investment. The investors go and put money where they make profits and there are no risks to lose. And these new technologies have high risk, but we have to make the steps forward. That's why European Union is putting a lot of money uh, supporting projects that they can really take us there. My institution, my university participates in many, many projects. We are leaders in many of those to bring the new concepts to Europe. Uh, I was personally uh, for 10 years responsible for the waste material flows in European Union, the European Environment Agency, which was created in Copenhagen 2003 and really has a strategy and the directives, and they had the responsibility for Europe for the waste management. We started with a project about Athens bio waste. We wanted to see what we can do with food waste in Athens. Athens is 5 million, it's half of the Greek population. So we started a project there with municipalities, how to separate this waste in the houses. And we established the methodology who is now in the country taken up for all the municipalities, using a small meat for the house, then a bigger house for a, a block of buildings or a, just a single house, and then a special vehicle to make this, to transport them for further treatment. And we manage this, but you have to encourage people. You need a lot of information, how they can really manage. Continuously, you have to bring awareness raising to people. They cannot do it one day. They forget, people, they are not really geared to do recycling. Um, and then we used to take this the waste into the factory that this is a huge factory in Athens. We treat about 1,600 tons of waste a day. And what do we treat? We put waste and we take waste out, it's nothing. We just stabilize organic waste and put it into the landfill. The materials we recover, you cannot recycle because they are dirty. China stopped taking them, India stopped taking them, so we put them in the landfill, the best way. So we spend our money putting things into the landfill. So what we did, these are the organics we have we separated. Uh, we mix with greens and then we feed a special reactor. This is one of the channels we use to stabilize the mix 
bio waste when they come from recycling from mixed waste and stabilize and put them into the landfill. So we choose one of these channels to put the separate uh, organic waste and we managed to get pretty well stuff. If you see, this is the athletes bio wash compost. We managed to get compost the simplest way, very good quality. We have the end of waste criteria, the European Commission gives the end of waste criteria, which means that a waste stops to be a waste is a product. And for the mixed waste, this could not really uh, fit the end of waste criteria because some of the metals are much higher than the, the limits. But also to tell you that if you don't do separate collection of organic and you stabilize, you cannot use this as a compost. You have to throw it away. So it doesn't count towards the cycle. Composting, of course, is the simplest way, but you don't want to stay there. What we did, we moved to another project, the waste to bio. We have to create materials out of our bio waste. And what was our aim? Sorry, our aim was to create products, biofuel. So we built this reactor in my lab where we can create um, ethanol and some other products. Ethanol is a commodity, ethanol is a fuel. And we have to put ethanol in our biodiesel, in our fuels by 10%. So ethanol can be mixed with diesel, can be mixed with fuels, and then you can have this uh, fuels 10% uh, that is required by the European Union. Uh, you can see here that um, from one ton of waste, 780 kilos is water. So our trucks transport water to the landfills. And then we, meet, we, we, we develop a, a process, it's a simultaneous saccharification fermentation process where we do enzymatic hydrolysis. We break down the molecules, it's um, starch, cellulose, et cetera. We break down the molecules down to sugars, and then through fermentation, we produce ethanol. And the rest of the material goes to an anaerobic digester where we produce biogas. This is another flow, another stream from the waste. So up to now, we have two streams. We went further and further. You can see how much we are producing. I'm not going to stay there, but just to tell you from each ton of waste, we are producing 34 liters of ethanol, quite a lot of energy and digested, and the digested can be used for irrigation. What we did, we realized that in our food waste, we have 14% oil. What do we do with the soil? We extracted the oil the same way as we do for, we do for um, olives. So we extracted oil, which can be a diesel, biodiesel another stream out of waste. And you can see the materials we recover. And now through another huge project that we are demonstrating in our technological park, we try for each separate stream, either feed, food waste, bakeries, breweries, juice, all, all the bio materials, industrial materials, but it has to have a bio base, it's bio base, to, to create different uh, routes to, to obtain products. And just to show you that we obtain quite a lot of products. These are the designs we have now. This is the technological park. And this is the dryer. We dry the material to stop the microorganisms eating the materials. So we have a huge dryer. We use renewable energy to dry. And after the, then we make the oil extraction and then we have the anaerobic digestion a huge anaerobic digester to get biogas. And of course, this is the biorefinery, the dryer, the extraction unit, the ethanol production, anaerobic digestion to obtain electricity and heat. Let me check the time. <laughs> so this is the concept of the biorefinery. This is the refinery you have now producing the products, and this is the biorefinery that we have to go and create the products. Organic bioproducts and waste, they go into this biorefinery corpset. We create bio-based chemicals, biomaterials, biofuels, fertilizers in a very optimal way. This is the route, and this is where most of the research really 
could take place and um, find the optimum solutions. Um, carbon dioxide is something that you don't want. So we realize that during the anaerobic process, when we burn the biogas, we create CO2. We take the CO2 in a pond and we create biomass, algae. This algae is a biomass, has a lot of lipids oil. We remove the oil and we put the water back into this pond. We take the oil as a biodiesel and then the biomass back into the anaerobic digestion and then the solid digested as a, so as a soil fertilizer. So this process is the future process. We can take the CO2 and create other materials. Also can take CO2, I'm not showing this, CO2 with, CO2 with hydrogen produced from electrolysis using renewable energy and you can produce methane, natural gas. These processes now are developed in Europe are at the very technology readiness level. They are very high. They can really enter the market pretty soon. In your country, you probably you have anaerobic digestion. The anaerobic digestion, because I heard about manure, I heard about the, the animal waste. It's the only way to treat it through anaerobic processes. But this anaerobic process can really give you the biogas which is it's a fuel, you burn, you take energy, but you can use it in a biorefinery process to produce a lot of other products. And I'm telling you that now we need fuels for aviation and shipping. Aviation, we need methanol. You can get methanol from biogas. So this is what we have to, to do for the biogas. And also the solid part of the, of the, of the anaerobic can go through different processes and get other products. So the anaerobic process is not just a biogas, it's a biorefinery. And why is that? Why we want to convert this? Because it's the only way to get a lot of products. This is another project we did for manure, for animal waste. I'm not going to spend more on that, but we did it. And also this one, this process, and I came from the anaerobic digestion, you get all the fertilizers because probably in your country, you use the digestate on the fields. Now the European Commission wants to stop this because it's polluting quite a lot the, with nitrogen, the water, and uh, we have quite a lot of problems. Eventually this will be not allowed and we have to remove ammonia, phosphate, etc., from this digestate. Um, I'm not going to stay here. There are a lot of merits about digestate, but there are a lot of challenges that we have to think of it. And just to save time, I'm not going to go deep into that. This is the picture of Europe with the anaerobic digestion. We have a lot of units. Germany will have around 17,000 installations. Europe is the, um, Germany is the champion with 11,000 units, plants followed by Italy, France, and Switzerland. So in my country, you have very few. I don't know how many you have in this country, but um, the biogas uh, facilities can play a very important role for the bio-based products. For us to develop our projects, it took quite a lot of time. It was not an easy process. Oop. We had to move towards different states for the preparation of raw materials, for the bioconversion of bio waste and into products, and then optimize and scale up. So all this way up, you develop through different European projects to reach the scope, to reach the scale up that we are now, which can go to industrial scale. And this is the way forward. That's how we gain the knowledge to move. And now we have the industry, we have the Hellenic Petroleum, we have the um, bio refiner the, sorry, the refineries that they are with us thinking of the new, uh, new way of producing the materials we need. The bio waste challenges, huge unexploited flows of waste, development of integrated biorefineries to obtain the products that we need in everyday life. 
This is the message I want to give about bio waste. But circular economy is not only waste, solid waste. All of the circular economy is on other things. We have to develop, we have to recycle the plastics, the metals, uh, paper. So we develop a series of projects that people can really help to separate the, the, all these materials in their houses and bring them to a green kiosk. And in that green kiosk, we have a person to train people how they can really separate these materials and all these materials are very clean to go to industry. So we save all these materials instead of going to the landfill. These green kiosks now have been put in many islands and also in my country, in my own country, Cyprus, we now install in the mountain areas 50 units of those green kiosks, uh, as you call them, uh, where we can separate the materials and go directly to industry because we do a separation within these facilities. I don't want to show more on this. These are the pictures. The tourists go there and put the recycled material. So they get informed how to do it. And if nobody's there, they leave the materials, they get bonus. It's a really very nice optimized. And this was funded by the European Commission, as I said. Also for the islands. Islands are isolated areas. We had to do the waste management for the islands because they have a lot of tourism. And we did exactly the same for the recycled materials and for bio waste. And on Dinos Island, where is the famous church of Virgin Mary, they, we, we did all this um, separate collection. And you will see, we established the different bags for the houses, the different color, and then collected to these systems. And we, and of course, transported to the mainland for the industry. And for the bio waste, exactly the same thing with the small bin, bigger, bigger bin outside the house collection. And this composting unit as a prototype that was developed by us, we designed it. It's a continuous system. We put bio waste here and then it comes out as a mature material. So for this island, we solve the problem and we solve the problem for many small areas, isolated areas as well. These are some more pictures and these are... The... And coming towards the remaining of the materials, we talk about bio waste, we talk about the recyclables, 45% uh, is bio waste, about 40% is recyclables. We can really do a lot, but Europe allow us 30%, 30% for incineration to obtain the energy, only up to 30%. So we have to develop the waste to energy. And I'm chairing the International Waste to Energy Council uh, that we do the waste to energy projects. Though in my country, waste to energy was out of scope. Nobody would allow this waste to energy. Now we are maturing this. We can see in Europe, we have about 500 facilities. You can see we are, we are treated about 100 million tons a year on three incineration. And in my first transparencies, I show that uh, most of the advanced countries they are using a lot of incineration, which means that they have to lower a little bit. This is a picture around the world, but the, the most is interesting. This is the China. This is China. Look at the incinerators in China. They are bending, I don't know how many incinerators a day. They are putting everything. I, I don't know how much sustainable will be, but in, in, in China, they're getting a lot of energy out of it. They burn a lot, but there are very nice designs and don't be afraid if you don't have incinerators to take care of a very good one incinerator to, to instead of landfilling, to, to get the energy out of it. This in, in Italy, this is a thermal balance, how much you get the emissions. This is in Vienna. The Vienna incinerator is fantastic when you look at it. UK, this is Leeds, the incinerator in Leeds. Denmark, again in Denmark, Denmark is very advanced on uh, Copenhagen. Look on this lovely site for an incinerator. You think that's uh, the Hilton around it. Um, Flo sorry, Florida, I'm getting very dry. <laughs> 
Um, what was the previous one? Uh, China, 800 tons a day. And this is the biggest, this one of the biggest, sorry, China, 2,000 tons. And look at this one, 1.6 million tons is the latest model. It's all solar at the top. It's a fantastic. I visited this just before, before COVID. Uh, it was now open. Um, it's a fantastic facility. Uh, I will say that I have experience from China. They really do take care of about the incinerators and the emissions. Everything is so open to people to see how it is emitted and how much is really coming out of these incinerators. So the message I want to give, don't be afraid of the incinerators. We, we have to avoid landfilling and get the energy out of this remaining waste. And closing my speech, I will want to give just a few things because I think for process industry, you need this more than anything else. The water circularity. The water circularity is something that we really forget a little bit. It's not only waste, everybody's putting emphasis on, on waste, it's water. And in South Europe, we, we really have a problem of water. So the water circularity is a must. We develop the life project, the salt brine. We do desalinate in Europe, in South Europe. We don't have water, so we take from the seawater, we desalinate, and then brine is produced. This brine is a high concentration of sodium chloride. We put it back into the sea and we destroy all the sediments because of this salinity. What we did through this project, the salt brine project, we, we took the brine, we treat, and then we get water and solids. We don't throw anything back into the sea, zero waste, zero, zero discharge. Um, we, we design, um, this is the desalination plant, an evaporator, a crystallizer. This a crystallizer is using solar energy, the, the evaporators is using concentrated solar panels against solar energy, and then a greenhouse, a small greenhouse, and all this comes into sodium chloride, dry sodium chloride and water. So if I take 1,000 cubic meters, I use 1,000 cubic meters, and I don't throw two thirds back into the sea. And I save a lot of energy as well. Um, these are the CSP. We heat a boil, and then we evaporate. And this is a project. And that's what I said, European Commission, uh, since 1992 to 2017, developed 4,000 projects, over 4,000 projects on environment. And this was selected as the first project out of 4,000 because of its concept that we, we are really taking care of the resources and we use renewable energy. This is my team. We were there with the mayor. They, they took place in, in Brussels. And uh, along that concept of, wa of water, we created several projects with the European Commission, the Zero Brine Project. The Zero Brine Project, we can see it was about 10 million projects. Uh, we developed with many countries, redesigning the value and supply chain of water and minerals. A circular economy approach for the recovery of resources from saline impairs effluent generated by process industry. So we use different models. I cannot explain all the models on this, but we use different models. These are some of the pilots there. This is the, the port of Rotterdam. Our facilities from the National Technical University of Athens were transported to the Rotterdam port to demonstrate there because Evites is a company that desalinate water and give water to the whole port of Rotterdam. So we recover the salt from this industrial activity. Um, and we say how much we recover, but this is a very crucial project. The brine mining project is a project that we developed in Poland. Poland is a, the big producers of coal. It gives 90% of coal production in Europe. As they go down to get the coal, they emit minerals, salts, and water. All this is mixed and they create huge wastewater. It's not the coal, but wastewater. They throw this into the sea, into their rivers, into their lakes, and they have destroyed completely the ecosystem. They cannot use water for agriculture in the industry or even potable water. So we develop this brine mining is now is there where we recover the salt from the water. And we use, we, clean, we have clean water and, so, and sources is, is a, 
quite a lot of partners. We are leading the project and we recover a lot of materials. You can get all the data. We recover magnesium hydroxide, calcium carbonate, calcium sulfate, sodium chloride, and water. And of course, we save a lot of, um, in, of, of CO2 emissions. And also the water mining, and I'm closing with this project, the water mining is the next generation water management systems, large scale demonstrations for circular economy and society. With this water, we want to demonstrate in industry. This has to do a lot with shell and many industrial processes, but I will share with you what I did as an NTUA. In Cyprus, we, we desalinate, um, we have wastewater treatment everywhere. We, are, we have to have wastewater treatment, municipal wastewater treatment. We do the biological treatment and we have clean water. We consider we have clean water, but probably you have a lot of salts that they are within this water. The salinity is high. So what we did, we developed this project to remove the salinity. And now we are building a unit for Cyprus to get the, the treated water from the biological treatment plant and use our a concept for, for the brine to remove the salts on 3.5 million cubic meters per year, water that we give to agriculture. Without this water, there is no agriculture in the country. And I think um, I'm closing with this. Uh, see, these are the, and again, how to gain this? We went up the ladder through different projects. Let's join forces and create synergies. This is the message I want to give. This is the only way forward. We are working together with many institutions to develop these new technologies. And the closing, I would like to invite you to our conference, the 10th International Conference on Sustainable Solid Waste. It takes place every year in Greece in a different place. This year in, in Crete is an island, Hania is a city that will take place the 21st to 24th June. We usually we get about 1000 participants from 100 countries. And uh, it's a big event. I think it's becoming the biggest event on solid waste management internationally. Thank you very much for your attention. I think I was on time. Thank you very much for such interesting uh, lecture. Uh, is there any question or maybe commenter? If you don't have, um, uh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Please. I'd like to say thank you very much for your excellent presentation. Very important topic. This is one small gift for you. For my question. <laughs> yeah, <of thank>, <laughs> very critical question, I guess. Eh? Thank you. Uh, you found time. This is important for us because the Republic has many problems regarding investment. I have only two questions. Now, Florida, maybe. First question, you have mentors. The public has has many problems. You have demonstration. That's why we are here now. You can use holiday in Yakurina, you can try to get a proposal which of course. And uh, maybe to make one for example of the um, yes, I'm here to okay. to cooperate because your presentation is on the first day. Your yeah. You will continue. Uh, my question is because I'm solicitor for metal processing and metal recycling. In risk, aluminum factory, a box to Tunisia, aluminum factory, box to And you gave information about this town material. Mm -hmm. You know, in the uh, box, is scandium, gallium, uh, and uh, do you make some product for the like, people of the Malaysia factory? Or do you have plans? Uh, I tell you that uh, there is another group in my university from the metallurgy department that they are working on alumina and also from the chemical engineering, they are working on alumina. That's why I avoided two of it lab them and do this, but we are doing some on the water mining projects on, on, on other materials. I can give you a list of materials we recover. Also, we, we are preparing a proposal 
on the um, recovery of materials from the brines, that already we have brines from the seawater, that there are a lot of lithium, scantium, there are minor quantities, but we try, have to find ways of really getting those out. We are preparing something very good on the lab, and Gelica is there always subsisting on this, to start making some, uh, some experimental work before we make application for the European Commission. You have to show on a small lab scale that you really develop a process. And once you, you show that, then you can apply. It's a very competitive way of doing things, a very competitive way, but that's how we work throughout the years. First, we were working without any money, just in the lab to develop a small process. Once we have this small process, then we could say to the European Commission, look, we have this, it's a TRL one or two, we want to go to TRL5. These are the projects. And that's how, of course, we have many failures, many, many failures. You write 10 proposals, you get one. This is, uh, this is the rate of your European Commission. You don't get more than that, but we repeat and we put in the next year and the next year, and now we get through. Three days ago, before I come here, we put a proposal on the digest state. It was not funded. They said that's a very nice note. Look, you have an excellent proposal, but you are short of money. Take it to your country, and uh, your Ministry of Research will give you money. Then I phoned to the secretary. I said, look, we have this excellent seal. Can you give us money? I said, of course. And the next day, I received a mail from the commission two days ago. Forget about the previous mail. We found money. You will fund your proposal. So we are very lucky that we got directly from the European Commission the money. It's very, very difficult. It's very competitive environment. You have to try all your institutions, I hear so much about this and you are excellent conference. And this is a fantastic conference that we are doing. You have a lot of people working. Let's join forces and see what we can do. We might fail, but we might succeed. So this is the message I want to give. And thank you for the once, once again, thank you, uh, Professor Maria uh, Loizidao. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, anybody? have any questions? No more? Uh, if you agree, we would like to continue with program uh, because uh, we have uh, two uh, very interesting uh, invited lectures more. And after that, uh, we have a very fine cocktail. And if you agree, we would like to, to continue. Is it okay? <laughs> yes. And uh, I would like to invite uh, Professor Yelitsa Novakovic. Uh, would you be so kind to tell a few words about uh, Professor Novakovic? Just a few words about Professor Novakovic. Yelitsa Novakovic is a highly accomplished researcher with a background in chemical engineering. She received her Bachelor of Science and Master of Science degrees from Belgrade University and her PhD from the National Technical University of Athens. With over 10 years of laboratory experience in water and wastewater analysis and involvement in several EU projects, she is currently a senior research associate and quality control manager at the School of Chemical Engineering, National uh, Technical uh, University of Athens. Her primary responsibilities include implementing and monitoring EU-funded projects, conducting postgraduate research, designing experiments, and analyzing various physical chemical parameters of different waste streams. Let's greet uh, Professor Novakovic. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Just a little correction. I'm not a professor. I am a research associate in the lab of uh, Professor Loisidu at the National uh, Technical University of Athens. Oops. I'm going to present a piece, a little piece of our work, and it is about the role of uh, iron addition on Vivianite Vivianite formation during anaerobic sewage sludge digestion. Okay, this study was carried out as a part of the water mining project. You just heard about it in collaborations with our partner uh, at Vetus University in the Netherlands. So, 
I will start to introduce you Viviana, because me also two or three years heard about it. <laughs> okay, Vivianite is a rare mineral that uh, typically occurs as blue to greenish blue, very nice mineral. It looks like a pressure mineral. And I can say it is a pressure miner mineral because it is a phosphate mineral and could play a very important role in phosphate and phosphorus recovery from the waste from the sludge. Vivianite is present in wastewater treatment plant sludges, sludge, where phosphorus is removed by chemical precipitation. Could account for two to 19% of the sludge. Iron, we can see, can play and plays an important role in the recovery of, of Vivianite, actually phosphate from, uh, from sludge. Why are we interested uh, in phosphate recovery? Phosphorus is uh, considered a critical raw material due to its essential role in global food security and its limited and finite, finite supply. It is a key nutrient for plant growth and is commonly used in fertilizer. So the su sustainable use and recycling of phosphorus are crucial to meet future demand while re reducing the env environmental impact of its extraction and production. Okay, now I will go a little step back and say a few words about wastewater treatment plants. Wastewater treatment plants play a crucial role in uh, protecting public health and preventing uh, environment pollution. So we, here we can see technological, a technological scheme of a wastewater, of wastewater treatment plant. The treatment is comprised usually of a primary treatment, Secondary treatment and uh, big uh, wastewater treatment plants uh, have also anaerobic digestion. What we can see here, oh, I can, uh, ah, yes, okay. Okay, we have primary seed, uh, treatment with the grid chamber, etc., and primary settling, settling. Here in this stage, more, uh, very often it, it is common uh, addition of uh, ferric chloride in order to provoke uh, COD, which is chemical oxygen demand or organic uh, contact of the wastewater to coagulate and to, to settle as a sludge. So from the primary treatment, we have primary sludge, which is very rich in organic content. Uh, the liquid part goes to the fur further uh, treatment to the second stage, which is uh, oops, no. um, secondary treatment, which is biological process. And from the secondary treatment, we have affluent, which is treated water and it could go to the river, to the receiver, we could uh, reject it uh, safely, or we could treat it further to have uh, uh, water that we can uh, use again. This is a reclaimed, uh, reclaimed water. Also from the secondary tank, we have another sludge. It is waste activated sludge, and this is substrate in our world today. So both of sludges can go to the anaerobic digestion in order to produce biogas. Ara, we have recovery of energy and electricity. And again, we have sludge products. Again, we, can, we have sludge. And to decide what to do with it. So here are presented, okay, we don't, we cannot see them <laughs> very clearly. 
uh, possibilities of using sludges from wastewater treatment plant in a circular economy. So sludges are considered a significant source of energy and raw materials, which can be used mainly in three ways. These are sludge for energy recovery, sludge for res resource and recycling also in agriculture. And it is used a lot in agriculture. Okay, the benefit of sludge recycling is the use of nutrients because the sludge is uh, uh, rich in uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and carbon. But uh, all is not as <laughs> good as they can see. So the use of sludge uh, also uh, involves some risks. Uh, which are these risks? Sludge can contain uh, many organic micropollutants, opposite grass residues, microplastics, drug, biosolid, hormones, and endocrine disrupting compounds, which in very small concentration can affect very adversely the uh, environment and, uh, uh, and uh, affect the food chain. So we have to something to do with this to address this issue. So here are presented some the ways of uh, sludge uh, uses. And so there are also uh, common uses of the sludge, Oops. which I already said it is. We can use it for energy recovery. We can uh, have. Um, um, Okay, it has fertilizing uh, potential, and uh, okay, the other uh, different biosolids can be uh, by pyrolysis, and different uh, physical and chemical pro processes can uh, give different uh, uh, products and ensure the safe use of the sludge. New developed uh, products of the sludge can be. Um, Vivianite, for sure. We have also some uh, organic acids, which uh, can be used as a precursor, precursors for uh, production of PAJ. PAJ are polyhydroxy alkanoates, <laughs> which are uh, uh, actually bioplastics. This is, and this plastics is biodegradable. And uh, second. So, okay, I will say also about EU strategies to promote sustainable phosphorus management. So, in Europe, we have the wide policy frameworks that is the, the European Green Deal and the Circular Economy Action Plan that include measures to, pro to promote phosphate recovery from waste streams, such as sewage sludge, animal manure, and food waste. Phosphate recovery can help reduce the EU's dependence on imports and promote a circular economy. And it is a uh, um, really issue nowadays with the problem with Russia and the war in uh, Ukraine where imports of the fertilizers has stopped and it could provoke many, many problems. So the EU last year has established a regulation on fertilizers, which allows for the use of recovered uh, phosphorus and other nutrients, uh, and other nutrients as a component of fertilizer. This regulation sets out requirements for the production and placing of fertilizer on the market, on the European wide market, it, including the use of recovered phos phosphorus. Before this regulation, if, uh, nobody could take recovered products and trade them. Now, the, uh, this regulation allowed it providing that the products uh, complies with qual uh, quality assurance uh, system and the product is of high quality, which means that uh, uh, pollutants are lower of the limit uh, of the um, 
of the limits uh, proposed by the regulation. Also, uh, the European Union uh, has funded, uh, you uh, just seen it, seen it, research and innovation projects aimed, aimed at developing new technologies and business model for phosphate recovery. One of these projects is another, another project that we work on it, and it is uh, named Walnut, that is, say, uh, wastewater to nutrients. It, uh, its aim, it targets, it, it targets nutrient recovery from wastewater streams. So, we are now go to our piece of work. <laughs> Objectives of our work uh, were to demonstrate the possibility of phosphorus recovery in the form of crystalline vivianite and energy recovery from anaerobically digested municipal sewage sludge. Also, we, want, uh, we targeted to examine the effects of different iron sources are added. Yes, we tried uh, to add during anaerobic digestion of the sludge ferrous uh, uh, iron in the form of ferrous chloride. Ferric chloride, where is, we have trivalent iron, metallic iron with the scope to test um, uh, let's say waste iron, scratches, and uh, etc., as well as recycled uh, ferric iron. Here also the aim was to try uh, waste, let's say, from the water treatment plant, which use uh, as a coagulant ferric chloride. The spent coagulant can be resource, let's say, for waste ro waste ro uh, water treatment plant, uh, in order to recover. Uh, usable, uh, useful products. So, about our experiments. <laughs> um, the biochemical methane potential test is used to determine, to determine the biodegradability of activated sludge substrate under anaerobic conditions. Uh, yes, I could say that activated sludge substrate is not as easy to biodegrade because it is composed mainly of microorganisms. And we have the cell wall that it, uh, it is not easy to break it uh, through. And the other is the extracellular content uh, of the uh, sludge. So activated sludge samples were taken from Larnaca wastewater treatment plant in Cyprus and inoculum is anaerobic, is an anaerobic sludge from metamorphosis wastewater treatment plant in Athens. BMP tests were performed in an automated BMP system for approximately 20 days. The tests were carried out at uh, 37 degrees in triplicates with an inoculum to substrate ratio equal one. Uh, it is it refers to volatile solids of inoculum and substrate ratio. The tests are carried out using batch reactors with a working volume of one liter, and blank samples were included in the test to measure endogenous methane production from the inoculums, and the positive controls are also used to test the activity of the inoculum. Activated sludge. Uh, which are our control samples. These are samples without any addition of uh, extra iron, as well as activated sludge samples with an excess of four different iron so uh, sources were tested in this task. Amount of the iron added in this stage because uh, um, Larnaca wastewater treatment plant does not use uh, ferric chloride for chemical phosphorus uh, precipitation. It used the another process called EBPR, which is enhanced uh, biological phosphorus uh, removal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here we have some uh, characteristic of the sludge used and our substrate. I just say a few uh, basic characteristics that it is uh, total solid content is about. Um, 15 uh, gram per uh, liter, and the uh, VS, volatile, volatile solids co content, is about 10 gram per liter. Okay, we have total phosphorus uh, uh, about 400 milligram per uh, liter, a total COD, uh, let's say uh, 14 gram per liter, and uh, etc. So, 
Okay, here uh, biomethane potential tests are presented. And so we, for the, we can see here a cumulative methane pro uh, pro production during the experiments. And I just want to stress two, diff two characteristics. That is, in the control samples, uh, we have uh, a rapid onset of, bi of biomethane production. It starts uh, after a short lag time after uh, two days, here start biomethane production as well as with the samples with the metallic iron. In the case of ferrous and ferric uh, iron added, the, the, uh, the method of methanogenesis process does not start as quickly. It needs about, let's say, five days, uh, five, six days to start the process of production of biomethane. So, uh, with uh, what is uh, biomethane potential? It is normalized methane value about, uh, per gram of uh, volatile solids. And we can see here that uh, the samples activate is large with, uh, with, uh, with the metallic uh, uh, iron has uh, the highest biomethane potential, which is close to the 100 milliliter of methane per gram of uh, volatile solids to, to substrate. On the right, we can see uh, combined, uh, let's say, uh, biometal production with the total solid and the volatile solid degradation. Uh, we can see that the higher production we have, we have at the control samples and samples with metallic uh, uh, iron, but we don't have here the, the highest uh, volatile solid um, uh, degradation. Uh, Degradation is higher uh, with the uh, ferric and with the uh, recycled uh, iron. What does it uh, can mean? So I I would expect it uh, that uh, okay if I have a uh, higher degradation I will have also higher methane production. In this case maybe the uh, actually oxidation of the organic matter may be favorable and we have maybe higher production of car of uh, carbon dioxide and uh, higher production of biogas, but the less, uh, with the less contact of the biomethane in it. So we, all, uh, we also have examined then the kinetic of the, of the biomethane uh, production, uh, assuming that uh, the hydrolysis is the limiting factor of the anaerob anaerobic conversion process. And also the um, um, constant uh, hydrolysis rate constants uh, are calculated for the, each of the samples. And uh, all, uh, we can see again that uh, higher hydrolysis rates show again samples, control samples with, uh, without any iron and samples with the metallic, uh, with the metallic addition. Here are some characteristics of the digested samples, and we can uh, see that uh, after uh, carrying out the, the experiments, the total the, the pH of the, all the samples remained in the alkaline um, um, in the alkaline um, area, uh, promoting the biomethane, uh, which is uh, beneficial for biomethane uh, production. And also, we have that the redox potential has negative values. Actually, before uh, uh, before anaerobic digestion, the uh, the redox potential of the activated sludge has positive values and then uh, changed to negative, uh, uh, confirming the uh, prevailing the reducing conditions during the experiment. On the right, we have a distribution of um, iron analysis in the in the. Uh, sludge after uh, uh, digestion uh, after acid extraction. So we can see that uh, divalent, divalent iron is uh, in higher concentration, uh, is, is at higher concentration at all samples, uh, which could uh, means that we have in the reactor send iron, iron reducing as well as iron oxidizing bacteria, but also uh, I cannot exclude the rapid oxidation of uh, divalent iron upon uh, exposure to the air. It could be oxidized also very quickly, so maybe the, uh, these results could mistaken us. 
So here I uh, just present the concentration of soluble phosphorus after uh, performing anaerobic uh, digestion test. So we can see that uh, um, soluble phosphorus in the substrate is about uh, 120 uh, milligram per liter and uh, inoculum is, uh, is, let's say, 80. And after digestion with the iron source is added, we, have, we can see that soluble phosphorus is decreased uh, significantly. Apart from the case where we used the recycled uh, iron, uh, where the concentrations are even higher than at the beginning, which means, which means that uh, total phosphorus is converted to be soluble, uh, be soluble, but is not binded by this uh, 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 recycled source act. So here are X are the analysis of the digested uh, samples of the dried and the, the, uh, the digested dried <laughs> samples. Here we are, I just want to improve the presence of vivianite in the digested sludge. So the it is not shown with the no, no very, very nice, but the characteristic peak of the Vivianite is at uh, two theta degrees about 30. And we can see it here, here, etc. The, the the blue line is from the blank uh, samples. Okay, we can uh, see the presence of Vivianite in, uh, with, uh, in the samples with the ferrous, metallic, and ferric uh, iron, but we we don't see it in the control samples. Without addition of iron, we didn't have Vivianite. So here, it also doesn't uh, see very, very, very much. We can see here the presence of Vivianite as, as this bluish area, and it is uh, on the in many, many places on the solids. Also in the control samples, we didn't find any vivian. So we have also a theoretical scenario for estimating the electricity generation and vivianite production, considering that uh, biogas, uh, uh, that uh, the methane content in the biogas is about uh, 65%, and that one cubic meter of biogas can produce 2.14 kilowatt uh, hours of electricity. Or oh, we can see that the samples with metallic iron cannot give us uh, the higher electricity as with uh, uh, recovering of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, one, uh, 190 kilogram of vivianite per, per ton of dry sludge. All this number of electricity refers to the tone of volatile solids of the substrate. And, okay, we come to the conclusions. <laughs> so, iron is an element that is commonly found in wastewater treatment plants and can be added at different stages of wastewater treatment for COD and phosphorus removal. We, uh, we have shown that we can uh, add iron even at anaerobic digestion stage. It has been also demonstrated that adding various sources of iron, such as ferrous, ferric, metallic, and recycled uh, ferric iron during anaerobic digestion that can facilitate vivianite for, uh, formation. The presence of vivianite in digested samples is confirmed by XRD and optical microscopes. And it is uh, present as a free particles and potentially binding all of the phosphate in the sludge. Concerning biomethane potential, we have seen that extra iron addition has some impact on it. On it. Uh, namely, samples containing excess ferrous and ferric iron show a reduction, a reduction of approximately 30% in biomethane potential compared to control samples and samples in metallic iron. Additionally, the kinetic analysis showed that the control samples, again, and samples with metallic iron had also higher, higher hydrolysis rate contents, uh, constants. 
In terms of energy production, a hypothetical scenario considering the production of biomethane in a wastewater treatment plant revealed that metallic iron addition of a sludge digestion can provide the highest electricity, reaching 330 kilowatt uh, hours per ton versus substrate of sludge, while also recovering up to uh, 190 kilograms of vivianite per ton of dry sludge. This finding suggests that separating vivianite from the sludge could be a promising avenue for recovering the variable phosphate and energy. This aligns with the circular econ economy and nutrient recovery targets of future treatment, wastewater treatment plants. In summary, the recovery of valuable resources from wastewater treatment plants through the use of iron and sludge digestion can be a good example of the circular economy in action. It also contributes to the goals of the European Green Deal by reducing pollution and nutrient loss losses, improving water quality and promoting sustainability. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Dr. Novakovic. Uh, does anybody have any question? Please, ladies, from the from the last one. Thank you. Um, you you speak. Uh, we talk. Uh, about the mi micro pollutants in sewage sludge. Yes. Um, if, if we use the sludge to produce biomethane uh, during the anaerobic digestion, these micro pollutants are destroyed. Did Not you all know? Of them. Yes, yes, they have all, yes, many of them. I like to say like a biocide and uh, etc. But I, I think that the there are some micropolitans that can uh, persist and persist and they are in the sludges. And it, it's uh, in very small concentration, like uh, let's say this endocrine uh, disruptor can affect plants, can affect food chain. And, uh, can, uh, so the use of digestates mm -hmm. uh, to the soil as fertilizers, mm -hmm. in your opinion, mm -hmm. uh, have some risks. Yes, yes, yes. It is a subject now of uh, conversation between uh, ex uh, ex <laughs> how can I say? And it is uh, probably going to be to forbid, to forbid the use of sludge as it is on the field and for uh, fertilizing. And most uh, uh, probably they will find uh, another way for recovering of valuable nutrients from the sludge. Okay, it could be incinerator where the phosphate uh, content is uh, concentrated and we can, we can use another techniques to recover the phosphate. In this case, we hope that uh, vivianite could be recovered from the flood in the pure form and uh, this material to be used as a fertilizer or it could be uh, used from another uh, uh, stakeholder, like another industry, Okay, we can destroy, let's say, vivianite by adding the potassium hydroxide. Mm -hmm. We will then produce again flood of uh, ferric hydroxide and uh, the liquid uh, fertilizer rich in potassium and phosphorus. And nitrogen. Mm -hmm. um, and if we compose the digestate, uh, it's a process that destroyed the micropolitans. Did you know that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, if it is, uh, okay, we can compost it and we can use it and it is the use around the, 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 the Europe. I think in uh, France, they use a lot of uh, digested uh, uh, flag, uh, providing that uh, it uh, complies with the limits that we could apply to it. But there are not, let's say, heavy metal for me, the uh, higher than uh, the limits. The, Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have, uh, we have uh, many ways of disposing sludge and each country can really have its own agricultural practice how to dispose sludge. 
uh, European Commission wants to find the safe way for the dis disposal of sludge. That's why they are doing all this work and they are funding these projects to see if we can recover nutrients. Because when you put sludge or digestate, mm -hmm. you put too much or too little on the on the land. So it's better if you recover pure fertilizers, pure materials, and then you have a proper dose for, for agriculture. That's why they try through different ways to recover the fertilizers. Of course, um, they won't eventually stop uh, spreading sludge on the fields and the digestate. But they don't say this openly. They say it behind the closed doors because they first, they must find solutions before they stop something. So through these projects, I think they're trying to seek a solution, how to recover nutrients. And then for the rest, you must find a way. There are uh, chemical material, there are, um, um, materials that are not really so safe for the for health and the food, food chain. So they want eventually to stop this. And that's why you are working on to recover materials. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Also in, uh, in the some European uh, countries uh, like uh, German and uh, Switzerland, there is a legislation, I think it is adopted now for obligatory, uh, for obligation of phosphate recovery from the sludges. Only sludges with, uh, uh, with uh, lower than 2% of uh, phosphate or phosphorus could be uh, applied, let's say, and the rest and uh, uh, should be recovered. We should have more than 80% of the phosphorus recovered from the, from the sludge. <laughs> there is one more question. Of course. <laughs> Please. Stresko Stopic, Technical University in Aachen. Uh, firstly, I will not separate professor from <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for your for your time. And the topic is very interesting because wastewater treatment is always uh, very important and uh, this is first time that I obtained a new idea regarding your presentation, new uh, produced minerals from wastewater. This is excellent. For example, phosphorus is uh, critical metals together with rare earth elements. Rare earth elements also critical metals. And my idea is maybe it's possible to produce some minerals, for example, monocyte or cenotype, because phosphorus is together with lanthanum, cerium. Mm. And uh -huh. this is this is good idea because here in uh, Serbia, uh, we have an elixir, uh, maybe people from elixir are here, problem with uh, fertilizer and uh, about 0.5% uh, are rare earth elements. And this is this something that can be very interesting. My question is regarding energy during this wastewater treatment. Uh, I found production of hydrogen. Is this energy regarding hydrogen production in this process, distillation, uh, dissociation of water or something other? Uh, I was speaking about anaerobic digestion. Dur during anaerobic digestions, one of the step of the processes uh, is also hydrogen production, but it is uh, cons consumed by microorganisms to produce uh, methane. So, yes, we can we have car carbon uh, dioxide with hydrogen, and and uh, under anaerobic uh, conditions and uh, under act of microorganisms, we can produce uh, methane. Uh, also adding uh, uh, hydrogen to the anaerobic uh, digester could possibly all the produce, because in an anaerobic digester, we uh, produce biogas. Biogas is uh, consists of biomethane, let's say, but 60 to 70%. The other being uh, carbon dioxide, also, um, we can have some uh, hydrogen uh, salt sulfate, it give us odor also, <laughs> and uh, etc. Introducing a hydrogen in the bioreactor in anaerobic digestion 
could convert uh, the, the, uh, the higher rate of CO2 to methane. And so we can produce uh, clearer uh, uh, biogas with, uh, let's say, 80 to 90 percent of uh, methane in it. <laughs> Thank you once more, Dr. Novakovic. Uh, we can continue discussion uh, when we have a cocktail, of course. Uh, and uh, the last but not uh, the least uh, invited lecture, um, uh, Professor Sanya Armakovic. Uh, she is coming from the uh, Faculty of Science, uh, University of Novi Sad, Serbia. Uh, would you be so kind to tell us a few words about Professor Armakovic? Gladly, thank you. Sanja Armakovic is an assistant professor at the Faculty of Sciences, University of Novi Sad, Department of Chemistry, Biochemistry, and Environmental Protection, and leader of the Computational Anal and Analytical Chemistry of the Environment Group. She has been the mentor on four masters and eight diploma works until now. She is the supervisor, uh, supervisor at four PhD theses. Also, Dr. Markovic is vice president of the board of the association IDASCO. She was secretary of the section for analytical chemistry of the Serbian Chemical Society, Society Chemical Society of Vojvodina from 2016 to 2020, and a member of many different committees. Um, just a moment. She is a verified reviewer for uh, at the Web of Science with more than 350 reviewed manuscripts. Also, she was the reviewer of the Czech Science Foundation for the projects applied in 2019 and the re reviewer for the ERC grant of the Polish National Science Center in 2017. Dr. Markovic has been awarded um, many awards, such as, such as the Award for a Scientific Excellence in the field of natural and mathematical sciences, subfield physics, chemistry, and physical geography for the third in 2020 and second in 20. 2021, most cited researchers in the uh, autonomy province of Vojvodina, uh, 2021 and 2022. Um, sorry. Uh, her expertise is analytics of biologically active compounds, advanced oxidation processes, and molecular modeling. According to Scopus, she was cited more than 2,880 times, and her H index is 32. So, Dr. Okay. Thank you for this nice uh, introducing me. And I would like to say that it's my great pleasure to be part of this event and have opportunity to talk about uh, application of great uh, grape uh, biostimulators and their stability under solar, solar uh, light. Uh, I choose uh, today to talk in rainwater. Uh, why we talk about biostimulators today? First reason is because they are substances that enhance plant growth and productivity by stimulating physiological and metabolic processes in plants. Also, they are promising tool for increasing food yield. They can improve plant growth under various environmental conditions and help plant, uh, plants cope with stress factors such as uh, drought, salinity, and heat. Also, biostimulators are important because they can be derivated from natural sources such as uh, seaweed extracts, humic and pulvic acid, or they can be chemically synthesized. Different biostimulators use as stress elevators in grape wine, improve nutrition uptake, stimulate root growth, and increase stress tolerance, but do not exchange uh, photosynthesis and metabolic processes. That is very important. However, they use should be carefully evaluated case by case, considering factors such as crop type, soil conditions, and potential environmental impacts. Second reason why we talk about biostimulators is because as on February 2023, the global population is estimated to be around uh, 8 billion. 
the global population is expected to increase. And in the coming decades, it, uh, uh, it is projected to be uh, around 10 billion, uh, uh, for example, in 2050. And uh, if you look at this graph, you can see that uh, population will increase, especially in developing countries. According to, to the United Nations, it is estimated that global food production will need to increase by approximately 70%. And what it will require? Sustainable agriculture practices. I put it on the first place. Better management of soil fertility. We heard today about that. Investment in agricultural research and development. Reducing food waste and improving distribution. We also heard that I uh, think that Professor said uh, on plenary lecture that 20% of European food is lost. And that is huge number. When we talk about food, um, for sure, grape isn't on the first place. But grape production is essential in Europe for several reasons. For example, historical and cultural significance, economic importance, environmental benefits, and health benefits. Health benefits is connected with economic importance because uh, when we talk about health benefits, a lot of scientific uh, manuscripts talk about uh, benefits of wine and grape. And because of that, export grape and wine increased, especially in countries such as United States and the countries in Asia. Today, I will talk about two commercially available biostimulators, Ormorok and Globaril. They are synthetic compounds apply directly to the target plant to improve agriculture production. First, the primary objective of the field experiments was to investigate the impact of the applied biostimulators on the grape berries, standard physical and chemical attributes, which are indicative of uh, their quality. And uh, this research uh, did uh, my colleagues from Faculty of Agriculture. What they got? Uh, Ormoruk increased grape berry weight by 16% compared to the control and significantly increased berry size. If you look at uh, all these results, we can see that the results obtained after the field experiments indicated that Ormoruk yields better results than Globari. They did uh, these experiments last year in Sremski Karolci. Also, <laughs> BRICS measurements can help ensure product quality, optimize production processes, and improve customer satisfaction, which is important uh, if we talk about uh, uh, export of these, uh, these uh, substances. The ideal titrable acidity value for the red grapes can vary depending on several factors. I mentioned only a few, uh, grape variety, growing conditions, uh, wine style, et cetera. In general, the ideal range of TA for red grapes is between five and eight uh, grams per liter of tartaric acid. I mentioned why it is important to use biostimulators if you want to get uh, better quality and quantity of grape, but why biostimulators can positively affect plant growth and potentially reduce the need for synthetic fertilizers and pesticides, they can also negatively impact the environment. I mentioned leaching of, of uh, extra uh, nutrition into waterways, also contribution to greenhouse gas emission or other environmental impacts associated with uh, industrial agriculture. What could be solution? For example, very simple, and we also heard uh, something about uh, that in previous lecture, hydrolysis is an important degradation pathway for environmental substances besides photolysis uh, or redox reactions because Hydrolysis is a chemical reaction that involves the breaking of chemical bond using water molecules. It cannot be simple, more simple than this. Many studies by 
uh, authors suggest that abiotic transformation, such as hydrolysis and photolysis, could be significant for the environmental degradation of substances in nature. Because of that, we investigated hydrolysis of uh, mentioned compounds and what we what we get. First, we can see that globaril is more stable than ormorog. After 150 days in water, only 8.5% of globaril was removed, while 33% of ormorog was uh, removed for the same time. We wanted to understand our results and explain why we got different results. Because of that, we did MD simulations and uh, we can see that radial distribution functions uh, for globaril is very interesting. Globaril has many atoms which react with, with waters, but I said that it is more stable. Ormorok has only one, but very, actually I wrote extremely sharp value belongs to uh, hydrogen 24 because Ormorok has carboxyl group and hydrogen 24 is part of that carboxyl group. And that in interaction is important, very high intensity and short distance. And that could be uh, one of the reasons why Ormorok is more, uh, is less stable in water comparing with globari. I said that uh, photostability is important because many compounds are sensitive to light. It is essential to investigate ormorog and globaril sensitivity towards to light. We did that with two concentrations and we can see that we got the same results. Concentration wasn't important in this case, but we investigated uh, stability of these compounds also in rainwater. And we can see that efficiency of process is higher in rainwater. Then we analyzed the water and what we saw, total hardness and chloride ion content were much higher in rainwater compared to the ultra pure water. We were very satisfied. But when we look at our results for globari, we saw that efficiency is in rainwater uh, uh, decrease. And of course, we analyze structures of this compound. And we can say that the active component of Ormorok has a naphthalene ring and carboxyl residue. I mentioned it. It has been shown that structures with carboxyl residue are susceptible to direct photolysis and reactions with hydro hydrogen carbonates, calcium, magnesium chloride, and other ions uh, on the other hand, Globarium's active component uh, has a highly stable benzene ring and purine ring, which are hardly susceptible to the chemical reactions. Also, one more question was interesting for us. Why Ormorog absorbs light more than Globarium? And of course, we uh, calculated uh, for frontier molecule orbitals and got some answers. For example, energy gap is significantly higher in the case of globarin molecule compared with ormorok. This suggests that a lower amount of energy is necessary for uh, ormorok uh, to be ex, uh, ex, uh, excited. And this also could be a reason why ormorok is more uh, reactive uh, when we have sunlight. When we talk about environmental chemistry, COD and DOD are very important parameters. And our results show that uh, COD and BOD values were reduced more significantly in the case of Ormorok. Also, BOD values for Ormorok were reduced slightly less compared with COD. And what I can conclude at the end, Globaril and Ormorok increase grape weight and size, but the effect depends on the crop production. With the increasing food demand, biostimulators use has increased globally, 
Therefore, monitoring their stability uh, and behavior in the environment is necessary. I mentioned that hydrolysis and photolysis are suggested as practical and very economical ways of removing residue of these substances from the environment. And I mentioned a few times that Gobari shows as more stable com compared to Ormorok. Uh, to better understand our results, we did uh, DFT uh, analysis and compare influence of molecular structure and uh, we can see that uh, uh, I said uh, uh, in the beginning that uh, each organic compounds which we use, it is uh, very important to, uh, to observe them case by case. And this is only small part of our research. We can say the beginning, we, I mentioned that we start with this uh, experiments the last year. And of course we continue now, we have something more to share, but today, I think that is enough. Uh, and I would like uh, to, uh, to express my gratitude to uh, all my colleagues from faculty of the part of uh, faculty of sciences and faculty of agriculture, especially my colleagues uh, from the department of chemistry, uh, Maria and Andriana, Dr. Maden Karlajcic from faculty of agriculture and uh, Dr. Armakovic from department of chemistry, oh, <laughs> department of physics. <laughs> yes, Department of Physics at uh, also at uh, Faculty of uh, Sciences. Thank you all and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Armakovic. Uh, is there any question? Maybe commenter? No? No more present? <laughs> uh, it's okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, this is the we are finished uh, our first day of this uh, this official program for the first day of our congress. Um, and uh, I would like to invite you to the cocktail welcome cocktail, uh, which is organized by the Faculty of Technology, University of East Sarajevo. Uh, I hope so that you will be enjoying the rest of the evening and of course in the rest uh, in the in a few next days in in this congress thank you very much thank you.